Hello everybody, I'm glad that you've been able to come back and listen again this week. I want to get straight into God's word and tell you about a letter that was written by a man called Paul. He wrote it to Christian people living in a place called Galatia and he wrote it to them to help them learn more about true faith and about the work of the Holy Spirit. Now we're only going to look at a tiny little bit of this letter but if you wanted to read the whole letter you'll find it in your Bible and we call it the book of Galatians. Paul wrote the letter to help people understand what the Holy Spirit would do in their lives and he called what the Holy Spirit would do the fruit of the Spirit. If I asked you what would I see on an apple tree you would know straight away apples. You wouldn't tell me that I would see oranges or pears. You know that when you look at an apple tree, you expect to see apples. And Paul knew that when we look at a Christian, we expect to see certain things because that Christian has the Holy Spirit living inside of them. Now, I know lots of you know Will from church and from followers, and he is going to tell us what the fruit of the Spirit are what the things are that we should see when we look at a Christian's life. Hello everyone. The Bible says in Galatians 5 verses 22 and 23, but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness, temperance. Against such there is no law. So love, joy, peace, long-suffering, gentleness, goodness, faith, meekness and temperance. They are the fruit of the Spirit and you should be able to see them in a Christian's life because the Holy Spirit is living inside of them. But boys and girls, who is a Christian? What makes you a Christian? Well, I'll ask you some questions. Are you a Christian because you live in Northern Ireland? No. Are you a Christian because mommy or daddy or your granny are a Christian? Does that make you one? No. Are you a Christian because you go to Sunday school or just because you go to church? No, that doesn't make you a Christian either. Boys and girls, you are only a Christian if you have come to God sorry for your sins and asked to have them taken away. And then you have turned from your sins. Then God will forgive your sins and he will give you his Holy Spirit to live inside of you so that you become more and more like Jesus and so that you will see the fruit of the Spirit. Boys and girls, God's Holy Spirit only lives in his people, in Christian people. And that doesn't happen unless you come to God and ask to be forgiven for your sins. Now, you can do that today. You can do that at home. You don't need to be in church and you don't need to use big fancy words. You just need to come to God and be sorry. Ask him to take your sins away and live your life for him. Now, we're going to look at the first of those fruit of the Spirit. Do you remember what it is? It was love. We say love about all kinds of things. Maybe you say, I love to go to the beach or I love chicken nugget and chips. Or maybe you say, I love my family or I love God. We even say that we are in love. I am in love with my husband. It's a hard thing to describe, isn't it? I tried to find out about love from these. But I'll be honest, I didn't learn very much. They say things like in love and real love and hugs, but I still don't know what love is from them. And we can look it up in a dictionary and that might help us to understand some things about love. It says things like it's a strong feeling or a great interest or pleasure in something like I love football. But And that's a little bit more helpful, but it's not the whole picture. The Bible speaks a lot about love. Love is very important to God. The Bible says that God is love. You know, Jesus told people that the two greatest commandments were to love God and because we love God, to love other people. 
Now, there are some verses in the Bible that are really good at explaining love. Now, in my Bible, it says charity, but it means love. Paul wrote these words as well, and he wrote them in Greek. And sometimes in our Bibles, it says charity, and sometimes it says love. So as my friend Chris reads these verses for you, every time you hear the word charity, you know that what it means is love. The Bible says in 1 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 4 to 8, Charity suffereth long, and is kind. Charity envieth not, Charity meaneth not itself, is not puffed up, doth not behave itself unseemly, seeketh not her own, is not easily provoked, and thinketh no evil. Rejoiceth not in iniquity, but rejoiceth in the truth. Beareth all things, believeth all things, hopeth all things, and endureth all things. Charity never faileth. But whether there be prophecies, they shall fail. Whether there be tongues, they shall cease. And whether there be knowledge, it shall vanish away. Wow, boys and girls, there were a lot of big words in there, but we can already see that this love isn't the love that we have for chocolate or for football. And it's more than the love that people have for their family or friends. This is a special love that the Holy Spirit helps us to have for other people. It's a love that puts other people first, no matter who they are or what they've done. Christian people are to love in a different sort of way. Now, I know there are a lot of big words in there and I'm going to go back over those verses that my friend Chris read and I'll put the words from the verse up here, but I'll try and give you some easier to understand words. So, love is patient and kind. Now, I think we all know what that means, what it means to be patient and what it means to be kind. Love does not envy, which means it's not jealous and it doesn't boast. Do you ever go into school and tell everybody, I am the fastest runner in this class and you make other people feel bad because you really are a fast runner? It's not arrogant and that means, you know when you see people and they just think they're mo the most important person in the room, they're the most important person in class, well that's being arrogant. It's not rude and I think we all know what it means to be rude or to be nasty. And it does not insist on getting its own way. That's like when you're playing a game and it has to be done your way or you're going to huff and you're not going to play. It's not irritable and that, or easily annoyed. Do you ever ask someone a question, just a simple question, and they bite your head off? Well, that's being easily annoyed. It's not resentful. And that means that you don't get bitter and angry with people because they've done something and they, they've treated you unfairly but you start to get bitter and angry. Love's not like that. It does not rejoice in wrong things but rejoices in the truth and rejoice means joy and happiness so we shouldn't be happy about things that we know are wrong. Love bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things endures all things. Love never ends. So boys and girls, those verses should describe you if you're a Christian boy or girl. Remember, only Christian boys and girls have the Holy Spirit living inside of them. So if you have the Holy Spirit, you should have this fruit, this fruit of love. People should be able to look at you and see a little bit of what God's love is like. Now, maybe you're thinking, I love people. No problem. I, I've got a really nice brother and sister and I can, I can love them. No problem. And I've got a really cool bunch of friends and I really love them. But boys and girls, you know what the Bible tells us? What Jesus said? Jesus said, love your enemies, those people that you don't really like. Maybe teacher pairs you up with someone in school and you don't really like them. You are to love them. If you're a Christian boy or girl, 
you are to love them. That doesn't mean that they have to be your best friend in the whole wide world. and You don't have to hug them. It's not that kind of love. It means that you work with them and you're patient with them and you don't boast and you don't make them feel bad. And even though maybe they said something about you and you, you're not bitter and you don't resent them and you're not nasty about them, you show them love because you have that special love. You have the Holy Spirit inside of you and you want them to see Jesus in you. Does all of this sound a bit impossible, boys and girls? It's hard to love everybody. Well, boys and girls, without the Holy Spirit, it is impossible. But when we talk to God and we ask him to help us, he can help us to love people more and more. He helps us grow and be more and more like Jesus so that we can love people. And boys and girls, sometimes you'll find that you haven't treated people the way that you should, that you haven't loved them like you should. And you need to say sorry for that. And you need to come to God and say sorry for that as well. And he will help you. He will He will help you to deal with people differently the next time to love them better my friend Joanne is going to talk to you now and she's going to talk to you about how she became a Christian and tell you more about God's love hello boys and girls do you like to read I do and I have lots and lots of books in my house I want to show you one that's very unusual I wonder have you seen a book like this before it doesn't have any words or pictures, just colours. But do you know, it tells me a wonderful story of God's love for me from his word, the Bible. When I was a little girl, I had a grandmother who was a Christian and she brought me along to church with her every week. And I remember that near to where I lived, there was a tent where they held meetings every night and some were for boys and girls and I went along and that's the first place that I saw this little book and each night that I went I learned what all of the different colours in the book meant. The first night I learned about the gold page and the gold page teaches us about God. The Bible tells us that God is our creator. He made everything and he made me, he made you, and he loves me. It also speaks of heaven, and that is the place that God is preparing for his children. God is holy and pure, and so is heaven. And there is one thing that can never be in heaven, and that is sin. And I remember listening to how sin was disobeying God, doing things that made God sad. God loves me, but he can't be where there is sin. And do you know, even though I was just a little girl, I had done things that were wrong. I had told lies, I'd been unkind, and I hadn't done what my mummy told me to do. And because of that, I couldn't go to heaven. The Bible tells us in Romans that we have all sinned and we come short of God's glory and sin must be punished. I didn't want to be separated from God forever. But do you know, the next night I learned from this little book all about the red page. God knew that I would never be good enough for heaven. I couldn't do anything to save myself, but God had a plan. God was going to send his son, the Lord Jesus, who was perfect from heaven to earth to die on the cross for me. The Lord Jesus died willingly on the cross to take away my sins. He shed his precious blood so that I would not have to be punished for my sins. He took my place. And do you know, he didn't stay on the cross. He died, but he rose again on the third day and he is alive in heaven today. And because of what the Lord Jesus did, 
I could have my sins forgiven. I was told that I needed to turn from my sins. I needed to say that I was sorry. And I prayed to the Lord Jesus and I told him that I was sorry for my sins. And I told him that I wanted him to forgive me. And do you know, he did exactly that. The Bible says that whoever calls on God's name shall be saved. And I was saved as a little girl of five years of age when I asked the Lord Jesus into my heart. And now when God looks at me, he doesn't see my sin. He sees me as clean, like this lovely clean page. He sees me as clean because of what the Lord Jesus did for me on the cross. And the final page is green and green reminds me of new life in my garden at the minute. There are lots of new plants growing and the trees are green. And just as I had turned from my sin, I was now a new creation. The Bible tells us that old things, my sin has passed away and all things will become new. So I needed to grow and to learn to live to please the Lord Jesus. And that's what the Holy Spirit does. Helps me every day to read my Bible and to pray and to talk to God and to ask him for help. And when I do things that I shouldn't do or say things that I shouldn't, I can come and talk to God and tell him that I'm sorry and ask him to help me to live for him. I hope, boys and girls, that you know the Lord Jesus as your saviour. If you don't, I pray that you would trust him. He loves you. He wants to be your saviour and you can ask him to be your saviour right now today. And if you've already done that, I want to encourage you to keep reading your Bible and keep praying to God and to grow as you learn to be more like him every day. Thank you for listening this morning, boys and girls. Next week, I want to look at joy, this next fruit of the Spirit. I will be praying for you this week. The rest of the church will be praying for you this week. And I hope that you do come back and listen again. Bye-bye.